I want to welcome you all to, it's six o'clock now, I want to welcome you all to the public hearing on tree removals on Little Brook Road in Raymond Street. Uh, tonight's agenda, I'm going to go through it quickly and some uh, procedural rules also so that we uh, all know what to expect as we go forward. So tonight's agenda uh, for, for, for our meeting, uh, which will run from 6 p.m. to 7.30 with a hard stop at 7.30. Um, we're going to start with our tree warden, Mike Cotta, providing an introduction to the tree hearing process. Then Eversource will give will be given an opportunity to present their project. After that, the uh, first selectman uh, for the town of Darien, Jamie Stevenson, will give her testimony. Uh, the tree warden will then acknowledge any submitted written testimony. We will then move on to testimonies from attendees who wishes to speak. Um, and to be able to speak, I'm going to give you some uh, guidelines here. To register to speak, you must insert your name and address into the chat box. You must have both name and address, please. Um, we will be called in the order of which you register. I will do my best to keep that in the order, um, making sure that we don't miss anyone. <clears throat> please remember this is not a question and answer session, but in fact, it is to allow attendees to provide testimony um, on this project. You will be allowed three minutes each to speak to ensure all attendees that want to speak are given the opportunity to do so. Um, some important information to be aware of. Um, there are uh, the tree postings were on Littlebrook Road in Raymond. As you're aware, there are many, but our official count goes as follows. On Littlebrook Road, there are 97 postings, <clears throat> I'm sorry, which include seven for brush areas. The recent po postings, which increased the number, included also, very small trees and some saplings. This was to provide a full picture of the vegetation removal. On Raymond Street, there were only three postings. I'm going to pass the hearing on to uh, Mike Cotton now to uh, get it uh, get it underway. Mike, thank you, thank you, Ed. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Cotta, <clears throat> and I'm the tree warden for the town of Darien, Connecticut. Uh, tonight's public hearing concerns the removal of trees located in the municipally owned right of way adjacent to Little Brook Road and three trees in the municipally owned right of way north of the railroad underpass adjacent to Raymond Street. All trees have been posted for removal as required by law per Connecticut General Statute section 2329. The town of Darien received written objections to the tree removals within 10 days. Connecticut General Statutes requires that the tree warden hold a public hearing at a suitable time and place after giving reasonable notice to those parties known to be interested in the matter. Notification of this public hearing has been sent to those known interested parties. Notification of this public hearing has also been posted on the subject trees persons present this evening will be given an opportunity to be heard on this matter. Uh, the tree warden will make a decision within three days of the close of the public hearing. Any party aggrieved by the tree warden's decision will have 10 days to appeal to the Superior Court and Eversource can appeal to the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. Uh, everyone present this evening will have an opportunity to make a statement. Due to time limitations, please keep your statement to three minutes. Before making a statement, please identify yourself uh, by name and address for the record. Thank you. And we'll move on to uh, Eversource to present the project. And uh, folks, just before we get onto Eversource, let me know. Um, we do, we are starting to take names in chat room. Please sign up if you'd like to speak. Thank you. John, we can't hear you.
Sean, we still can't hear you. The ability to hear me. Now we can. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sean Reddy. I'm the manager of vegetation management for Eversource. I'm going to be um, doing a short um, review of the project and the requests that were made and the reasons for them. I'm going to begin uh, sharing my screen. Hopefully that goes better than the audio. So uh, we, we put together this uh, short um, preview of our program and the, the specific project in the area of Littlebrook and Raymond Ave. I'm gonna go over um, the, the reasons Eversource maintains our transmission lines, the, the way in which we do it, the specific project and the project timeline. Our vegetation management program for transmission is different than it is for our distribution lines that run along the roadside. We uh, look at the facilities that are involved, the voltages of the lines, and normal growing conditions in New England. And we thoughtfully select the target species that are incompatible because of, of the species that they are and their mature height at growth. Our specification standards for clearance um, are, again, based on voltage, and we seek to get a minimum of 25 feet to either side of the outside conductors, the, the wires furthest uh, on the outside of the right-of-way. And in this particular right-of-way, we use what is called a one-zone maintenance, which is the, the same um, limitation of vegetation underneath the lines and outside the wires to that same 25 feet. And we look to target and remove incompatible trees and vegetation that grow taller than 25 feet when they're at full mature height. The safety considerations that we take into uh, for transmission are based on their voltage and their construction. These high voltage lines are different than the lines that run down the roadside and deliver energy to your houses and to businesses. And because of that greater voltage, we need additional clearance, additional space. Uh, the air around those lines actually uh, provides insulation uh, between the wires, the conductors and the trees so that the electricity cannot arc over from the wires to the trees. Uh, that distance is maintained and uh, proactively cleared so that we can prevent an electrical arc from occurring. This project, uh, which primarily runs along the <clears throat> railroad corridor uh, in Fairfield County, um, is a maintenance program that we have um, scheduled for this year of 2021. It runs approximately 18 miles from Greenwich through the towns of Greenwich, Stanford, Darien, Norwalk, and Westport, just to over the Fairfield County line excuse me, Fairfield Town Line. The majority of the line is adjacent to the Metro North and Amtrak Railway, which is owned by the Connecticut Department of Transportation. There are sections of the line that stray from that railroad corridor and are within easements on private property, uh, crossing town property, and, um, and some Eversource owned property itself. <clears throat> the specific work and the scope in Darien includes three and a half miles of transmission line uh, where we are targeting incompatible vegetation and selective invasive species. These are non-native species that encumber our ability to maintain our lines, inspect our lines, and have access down the right-of-way. Additionally, some work will be uh, conducted at night because of the access limitations in some locations as well as the ability to use the high rail to um, do some of the trimming that's directly adjacent to the railway, as well as some cleanup. We will 
um, work with the town to notify of when that work is scheduled as well as impacted neighbors of the railway. The purpose of this work is for reliability and benefits. These transmission corridors provide power to all of Fairfield County, and there are over 120 critical facilities across all of these communities, including hospitals, vaccination distribution sites, police and fire stations that are served by these power lines. A fault on our transmission system can cause outages to thousands, if not tens of thousands of customers, including homes, businesses, industrial customers, hospitals uh, across this entire region, as well as could interfere with Amtrak and Metro North, which is critical for the economic <clears throat> stability and vitality of the region. We are uh, partnering on, on while we cannot allow incompatible vegetation to remain and it must be removed we are working with the underlying property owners where this work is occurring to provide mitigation planting. While this does not replace the vegetation that was lost, it jump starts the um, replanting and the, uh, re, uh, the regrowth that occurs of compatible species within the right of way corridor. Uh, the, much of the planting that we're doing is focused on native plants, as well as foraging opportunities for native pollinators, such as bees, butterflies, and songbirds. The project timeline, which has been occurring since midsummer or early summer, actually, um, we are at September 21st of the public hearing. We've been doing extensive outreach uh, to the property owners directly impacted, as well as within the vicinity of this work. As the tree warden mentioned, the decision will be coming within three days, and then there is a 10 day period where any aggrieved party, as mentioned, can appeal, which may include the utility if um, the decision on trees is not what we would find acceptable. And then our partnering with the town, with the DOT, with Metro North, and with underlying property owners will continue until uh, any mitigation planting that is agreed upon is completed. Much of that may happen at this point next spring because of the timing of the work. I just want to thank the town of Darien for their assistance and help uh, walking us through this process and the patience of all involved, taking the time to listen and, and provide you your input. And at this time, I'm going to be ending my presentation and turning it back over to the tree ward. Thank you. Uh... At this point, uh, I'd like to uh, turn the meeting over to Jamie Stevenson, our first electoral, and then make a statement. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, I'm Jamie Stevenson, Darian's first selectman to Renshaw Road. I wish to thank all of the engaged citizens who have diligently been following and contributing to the town's process of adju adjudicating whether vegetation in the town right of way can be removed as requested by Eversource to further their transmission line resilience goals in southwestern Connecticut. I also wish to thank Eversource for the time and attention they've given to stakeholder concerns relating to the removal of vegetation along the rail corridor in general, and specifically in residential neighborhoods, including but not limited to the Little Brook Road and Raymond Street area. We're grateful Eversource recognizes the need to work in partnership with cities and towns and for their willingness to offer remedial plantings in some areas where mature vegetation will be removed. While I share the critical importance of Eversource's goal of a resilient and reliable electric grid, as Darianne's first selectman, I wish to be on the record as objecting to clear cutting vegetation as an effective utility resilience measure. Electric utility resilience measures must be balanced against impacts to the natural environment and impacts to residential property values. The Little Brook Road in Raymond Street area is of particular environmental importance given its proximity to Selickson's Dunlop Woods Nature Preserves. In a recently published Yukon study, parts of Darien have seen a deeply concerning 10 degree increase in average temperatures over the past 20 years. As a result, I'm concerned that planned vegetation removals will exacerbate an already alarming situation. 
As an environmentally sensitive shoreline community, Darien is subject to more frequent damaging flooding events as evidenced by the severe flooding our community sustained from tropical storms Elsa in July and Ida in September. After tropical storm Elsa, residents and businesses in Darien filed the largest number of large loss claims to FEMA than any other town in FEMA's Northeast region. We anticipate the damage from tropical storm Ida was significant enough to declare a federal disaster for our area and are eagerly awaiting the governor's decision. Several Darien homes are not habitable and a number of businesses remain closed due to flood damage. Significant vegetation removals without robust remedial plantings will add to an already difficult environmental situation here in Darien. I raise these environmental issues to implore Pura and DEEP to work together to find more sustainable solutions to electric grid reliability than clear cutting vegetation. We would like to have confidence that both regulatory agencies are working together to balance the needs of all stakeholders. I respectfully ask that the Darien Tree Warden do what is necessary to raise this issue to the appropriate regulatory bodies for further deliberation. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, acknowledge submitted written testimony uh, that's been received from Hans Tallis of, I believe, 12 Little Brook Road North. And we're going to try to make that available on the website. And I'd also like to move on and uh, allow people to speak at this point. Thank you. All right. Um, what we'll do now is through the chat room that we've had uh, people sign in. We're going to work our way down through the names and let them speak. Uh, please remember you have three minutes to present your testimony. Um, if you get close to three minutes, you'll, you'll get us a reminder that it, we're getting close just to, to give you an opportunity if you'd like to wrap up um, without missing some important points. So uh, Kate, our first one is Juliet Kane from 81 Locust Hill Road. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, Juliet Kane, I'm co-chair of the Darien Pollinator Pathway. So this is Darien's second public hearing in as many months about proposals to cut down trees. And for all the reasons you heard at the last hearing, and we're here tonight, we believe Darien needs a, to adopt a comprehensive set of rules for tree preservation and protection so we can address this kind of situation consistently. We've made suggestions to the town for guidelines that would protect our existing trees and would include a planting plan to ensure continuous canopy over the long term to help us withstand both natural and man-made threats like this one. At last month's public hearing, almost everyone opposed the felling of the trees in question. But less than 24 hours after the hearing, the tree warden decided that all the trees should come down. The decision wasn't responsive to the reviews expressed at the hearing and made no reference to them. Instead, it was based in part on the proximity, oh, sorry, the proposed development plans, proximity of the proposed construction activity to existing trees and planning and zoning approvals. So the hearing was held to discuss the tree removal desired by the development and yet the development was the main justification for the ultimate tree removal. I hope we can do better tonight. Skeptics might view Eversource's plan to cut down trees as an attempt to remove ongoing tree trimming from its budget and maximize returns to stockholders. And they wouldn't be the only ones concerned about profit motives. The State Attorney General recently submitted a brief to Pura advocating for an interim rate decrease, saying allowing Eversource rates to remain at their current level is tantamount to needlessly transferring income from ratepayers to shareholders. Is this a similar needless transfer in this case? And does this explain why vegetation management is the go-to option for Eversource when it could be looking at hardening and modernizing its infrastructure? Remember, hurricane speed winds are quite capable of bringing down aging infrastructure without the help of trees. Eversource apparently has a goal to become carbon neutral by 2030. But this neutrality only takes into account its facilities and operations. If a good portion of your business involves destroying carbon sinks, like cutting down trees, including trees cut for poles, how can that be ignored in, determine your over, in determining your overall neutrality? And Eversource says they may take their replantings into account to offset their carbon emissions. Frankly, this is greenwashing. But perhaps this explains why Eversource hasn't undertaken an environmental impact assessment here. It would be hard to justify ignoring the results of such an assessment in determining carbon neutrality. But seconds. the proposed work, 
Thanks. As uh, Jamie said, will have a direct and negative environmental impact. The existing habitat won't be restored. Eversource proposes a completely different sparse replacement habitat with far less ecological value and no shade or noise protection for residents. And it'll take time for any new plantings to establish, if they will without a maintenance plan, and if they will in light of the increased light that will yes. occur because so many trees are being cut and that will just um, uh, give rise to a proliferation of invasives. We need to think of trees as our flood prevention committee. There may be interesting questions of liability raised in the future for this kind of tree felling, but for now, our town in particular uh, as Jamie has said, simply can't afford tree loss on this scale. Thank you. Our next one, thank you very much. Uh, our next one is Kevin Costanzo from 31 Little Brook Road. Hi everybody, my name is Kevin Costanzo. I live on 31 Little Brook Road and I've been a resident here of Darien pretty much my entire life. I grew up right around the corner. Um, I married my wife in 2015 and we soon fell in love with Little Brook, all the trees. And in 2015, uh, this time of year, we actually found 31 Little Brook. We were able to close on it soon after. We've always been so thankful for the house, the, the view and the purchase of this house to make it our home. We accepted the trains and the power lines across the street for the trade-off of the wooded view, the crickets at night, and all the bunnies my children so desperately want to pet. Now, with the proposed cuttings, we'll see straight into the tree, into, into the trains, and this wonderful wooded street will be transformed into an eyesore. The front of our house goes directly to the trains, and while plantings in our yard would look nice, it still wouldn't block the complete view and sounds as effectively as what we have now. I understand the plain things next to the trains won't block sound either, but it certainly muffle it. Well, we, uh, the plain things we have now certainly do muffle it, and it's a big concern of mine. Currently, there are layers of overlapping trees and plants to create a dense, thick, natural overlapping blockage. I understand some trees are close to the power lines and they do have to be trimmed or removed, and Eversource does have to maintain these lines in a safe manner, but I think we can agree that not everything is in danger of hitting the lines. A replanting plan was presented and although it was thoughtful and detailed, there were not nearly enough trees or plants to be an effective barrier of really any kind. My house is one of the few that is in direct view across the street of the proposed clear cutting and I'm anxious to come to a better solution together. We currently have trees and plants at the bottom of the hill next to the street, up the hill, at the crest of the hill, and next to the track. Height aside, one row of bushes simply will not replace all the existing trees. We have a dense barrier to block out as much noise in sight of the trains while continuing to add a pleasant view my wife, my family, and I have enjoyed when we bought, when we, when we bought this house. In addition to my concern of the view of, in the sound, we have two amazing adventurous little girls. As a parent, the idea of having my little children Having direct access to the train tracks is a thought I can't keep out of my mind. It's not just one small section that a gate could solve, but instead of distance, you can measure it hundreds of feet or fractions of a mile. The safety, the safety concern of having my kids be able to get to the tracks weighs heavily on my mind every time this decision comes up. Right now, there's a thick barrier, trees and bushes to block access, and also the, and also the tracks are not visible, so they're out of sight and out of mind. So if I have a takeaway from this is that currently we have many feet of deep overlapping trees and plants that can simply not be replaced by a single row of bushes. We have a safety concern right now, which they're out of sight, out of mind. And please leave it better than you found it. Our kids live and play here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Eileen Sochi from 76 Holmes Avenue. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you. Yes, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I live at 76 Holmes Avenue and my backyard is literally Metro North. I'm sitting outside with my neighbor. Um, I moved here 23 years ago 
you can't tell from the Bronx. Uh, we've worked for 22 years to um, maintain this property and we have a deep wooded trees. We've done all we could to save trees, to come here and knock on my door and tell me that you're gonna cut 25 feet into my property, um, actually ruining my home is quite devastating for myself and for my neighbors. Uh, Holmes Avenue has been hit very badly. Uh, we flooded in July. We flooded again in August. Um, three people lost everything they had on the first floor. And I'm really asking you to do common sense cutting. You can't come in and cut old growth trees that have been here for a hundred years. My house was built in 1896. This doesn't make any sense. There has to be a way to remove what impedes on the electrical wires. What you're talking about is literally in my backyard. I could walk there in, in 35 seconds. And my question is, you have the right of way to come all the way into my property and just cut the trees is something I have a lot of difficulty understanding. And I'm gonna pass this to my neighbor, Mrs. Hoffman and give her the rest of my time I yield to Mrs. Hoffman. Hello, Mrs. Hoffman speaking, if I may. Hello. Go ahead, Go ahead Mrs. Hoffman. Okay. I've lived here for 55 years. I am 95 years old. And I just have a few words to say. You expect to come in and cut 25 feet? I live at 84 Holmes Avenue. If you did that, you would be in my living room. That is absolutely ridiculous. We've been through two floods, as Mrs. Sochi mentioned. And it's devastating what that has done. You cannot possibly cut 25 feet in my property or my neighbors at 80 Holmes Avenue or 82. It is absolutely insane. I don't know how you could possibly do this and be honestly live with yourself and go home and go to sleep. It's impossible. Please, you cannot do this. You have to come and look before you cut and let us know what you are going to do. I thank you very much. Okay. No, thank you very much. Um, our next speaker will be Ali Costanzo from 31 Little Brook Road. Hi, my name is Ali Costanzo. I live at 31 Little Brook Road. I just wanna build off some things that my husband said. Uh, I wanna thank Jamie Stevenson for all of her support in this. I think what she said was very well said. Uh, so we strongly object to the reckless removal of the trees in our town. We expect the tree warden to deny ever sources request until minimally, minimally we have reasonable answers to our serious concerns. I agree with the others. There has to be a better way. As proposed, this destruction will dramatically impact the quality of life for our community, the biodiversity of our neighborhood and the property values of our homes. It will tragically uproot the wildlife around us and change the climate of our street. It will remove the protective barrier that shields our children from the active train tracks. Despite dozens of requests over the last few months, Eversource has not done their due diligence with the minimal request of an environmental impact survey. The brief discussions they admitted to having is unacceptable and insufficient. The bare minimum we should insist from Eversource is identifying at least some of the major impacts that this work will cause, followed by discussing reasonable solutions instead of bombarding us with all the ways this will benefit us. Eversource has not done any of this. In fact, they have offered to plant some grasses and shrubs in place of a thousand trees, many of them mature, and insist that this will offset the environmental impact. I will also add that we are only discussing the work in the Darien right away. This does not include any of the work on the DOT easement, which people need to be paying attention to. The work performed by Eversource at 14 Little Brook Road is a smaller scale preview of what will happen to the rest of our street. At the top of the hill where the mature trees were removed and replaced with grasses, it is now hot and humid and not a single chirp can be heard nearby. It is a much different story further down the street where we live. The shady canopy provides a cool climate that briefly that brings relief on a hot and humid day. The birds that attract all the bird watchers in our town to our street are happily chirping away. Wildlife animals, foxes, bunnies, and deers are regular visitors to our street and take cover in the shaded brush you are planning on removing. There are significant and very noticeable differences between the top of the hill and the rest of our street. This work was a much smaller scale compared to what you are proposing. 
and it has caused a dramatic change in temperature, humidity, and wildlife in that area since the work was done. It does not take an expert to know that replacing mature trees with grasses is not a reasonable solution, nor does it come close to offsetting the environmental destruction Eversource is proposing by clear cutting our neighborhoods. How does Eversource plan to assess the environmental impact of these areas if they refuse to do an environmental impact study to determine the damages that need attention? If Eversource's request is granted, our property values will suffer. This is more about just an tax reduction. Attempting to sell our homes will take longer as our homes are much less desirable and undervalued because of our new, newly trained front properties. Reducing our property values by a modest 10% is a six-figure blow that will have a lasting effect on us. The inevitable tax reduction that we owed will come far from offsetting the financial hardship we will endure. How will Everstate compensate homeowners and the town for this financial burden? The natural border that separates our street from the train also keeps them hidden from our children and pets. Nice. My family takes frequent walks around the neighborhood with their daughters, enjoying the shade that the tree canopy provides and the protection from the train that the tree barrier gives. How will we protect our neighborhood from the exposed train tracks? Like many others in this town, I turned into the public hearing about the increased threat of flooding yesterday. Based on the observ observational rain data presented, we are seeing a high increase in rainfall and annual rain. Removing any trees will exacerbate the problem. With that public hearing and the recent flooding of our basements freshly in everybody's mind, liability needs to be assigned to either Eversource or the town. Seconds. Somebody has to own it. Eversource needs to modify their newly created policy with the consideration of the environmental, of the environment and the communities and their destructive path. We need to set a precedent here that encourages all environmentally responsible, that encourages an environmentally responsible response from Eversource. If they refuse to perform an environmental impact study, how does Eversource plan to assess the environmental impact to these areas? How will Eversource compensate the homeowners for diminished property values and the town for the lost tax revenue? How will we protect our neighborhood, especially our kids and our pets, and the exposed train tracks? Who is liable for the flooding that occurs when these trees are removed, Eversource or the town? The answer to these questions cannot be not our fault and we are not liable. Eversource, this is your fault. This is your liability. Work with us to find a better solution. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker will be Topeka Sexina, 354 Hoyt Street. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. I'm Deepika Saxena, 354 Hoyt Street. I'm co-chair of the Darien Pollinator Pathway. What Jamie Stevenson said tonight is absolutely correct. Across the country, municipalities have come to understand the value and importance of trees and have begun to integrate trees into their stormwater management design and policy. According to the EPA, and I quote, mature trees provide significant stormwater quantity and rate control benefits through soil storage, interception, and evapotranspiration. A tree with a 25 foot diameter canopy and associated soil can manage one inch of rainfall from 2,400 square feet of impervious surface. Interception and eva evapotranspiration also decrease runoff volume with larger trees providing exponentially more benefit than smaller trees. Trees have the ability to reduce storm water that would normally flow directly into a city's storm sewer system." End of quote. So why are we cutting down trees in Darien? Mature trees that are already providing the benefit that these other municipalities are seeking. In the past two months, we have had two major storms that have devastated our town with flooding. And he yet here we are, once again, arguing with Eversource and begging them to spare our trees. Earlier this month, Governor Lamont toured downtown Darien to survey the damage caused by tropical storm Ida. According to some accounts, at least six businesses in downtown Darien are likely to close permanently as a result of the storm. Homeowners near Stony Brook are looking for ways to have the state or federal government buy out their homes after these two unprecedented storms caused water levels to reach the tops of their garage doors. Darien is a coastal town. Climate change has come to town and over the next several years will continue to have a bigger and bigger impact here. There will be sea level rise due to, during storm surges and more and more flooding due to rivers rising. We have to do everything we can to slow this down. Ever source can go on cutting down trees, but if merchants go out of business and homeowners leave the area, there really will be no need for the power lines that Eversource is trying to preserve by destroying the very trees that might have helped avert the problem. Eversource needs to invest in a better way to deal with this. 
cutting down thousands of trees in Darien and other parts of Connecticut may seem like a cheap and good way to manage the issue. Perfect. But this will come back to haunt us all. These are, trees are the solution, not the problem. They take tens, sometimes hundreds of years to reach the maturity needed to provide maximum benefit. And then just a few minutes to cut them down. Once they're down, it is final. There is no going back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Natalie Tallis, 12 Little Brook Road North. Natalie, you're still muted. I'm gonna put on my timer so I can um, keep track of it so you don't have to interrupt me. It's right in front of me. Now, Natalie, as, as they saw in the chat room, we're giving some latitude to that, but we do have quite a few speakers. And at the end, if there's still some time and folks would like to speak again, I will absolutely allow that, okay? I, I should be good within my time allotment. Oh, okay. All right. thank, thank you very much. Um, this, my name is Natalie Tallis. I live in Darien. This evening's hearing is nominally about two streets in Darien where Eversource wants to clear cut on both private property and the town right of way. In reality, tonight's hearing is about much more. It's about the integrity of a private company and public utility and its treatment of people on the planet. Our town is part of a statewide effort by Eversource to clear cut hundreds of thousands of trees. This includes an unknown number of trees on Connecticut DOT property where Eversource has easements. Tonight, I'm asking the town of Darien to take a much deeper look into the environmental and economic impact of Eversource's current strategy. Clear cutting statewide under electric wires without conducting environmental impact studies or analysis of the outcome is irresponsible and I believe should be illegal. I did a quick calculation of the impact of removing the approximately 100 trees on a 0.3 mile stretch of Little Brook Road and found that removing these trees will mean 200,000 gallons of storm water will no longer be absorbed. And it's likely to end up in our basements and homes. Hans Tallis, a professor from Columbia Business School conducted analysis that showed Darien would lose $3.1 million in tax receipts and have a 6.4 million loss in property values if Eversource goes ahead with their current plan to clear cut trees. Ingrid Hess, a local realtor, also did an analysis looking at homes nearby. And she, her report showed a decrease of eight to 10% in the sale price of homes. And that was before Eversource removed a single tree. Eversource says trees and electric wires are incompatible. If that's true, then Eversource needs a solution that doesn't rely on the removal of trees. Study after study have documented that deforestation and clear cutting make climate change worse. I am sure that is not what the new CEO of Eversource or its stockholders want. Eversource claims everything they do is to maintain a safe and reliable electric grid. None of us are gonna argue against a safe and reliable electric grid. However, is that what Eversource is actually doing? Or are they clear cutting because it's cost and time effective and it'll make their stockholders happy? They aren't saying that either. We all understand their reliable and safe electric grid in the era of human caused climate change is a complicated issue. To clear cut is an easy and inexpensive solution. Eversource hires independent tree removal companies with chainsaws to spare. The workers don't have to be licensed arborists. They just need to operate a chainsaw and listen to directions. Working with engineers, computer scientists, environmentalists, public officials, regulatory bodies, and local conservationists to come up with a long-term solution is more complicated and more expensive. But that's what we all need to do. And that's what Eversource needs to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, next would be <clears throat> Dennis Frillinghausen. And I wanna apologize, I skipped over you, Dennis. Hello. Yes, sir, go, please go okay. ahead. We can hear uh, you. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, so thanks for having this hearing today. Uh, it's, um, this is an issue, by the way, my name is Dennis Frillinghuis, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Darien Land Trust, a uh, private property owner that's impacted by this plan. And as a board member of the Friends of Selix Woods, who is uh, 20, 
22 acres of town property that's uh, jointly managed by the land trust and the friends as a nature preserve. <clears throat> and uh, I, I just want to say that I appreciate the opportunity to speak, but was a bit surprised to learn of this issue. Uh, and I thank uh, Natalie and the, and the, the little group, uh, group for bringing this, attention, this matter to our attention. We were never notified. Uh, collectively, the town and land trust manage uh, 50 acres as a nature preserve, a significant portion of that. In fact, the whole southern border of that property is impacted by rights of way of DOT and Eversource. Uh, and they've worked in there before. And I'm, I'll say that we've had a good relationship with them and have had positive discussions with them. Uh, but what's very concerning to me is the lack of flexibility um, in terms of addressing the sensitivity uh, that the respective stakeholders have. In our case, much of the property that is going to be what I'll call a work zone is really wetland. And it's a very sensitive issue and uh, a very vital part of the watershed that goes to the Tokeny Brook uh, flowing off of uh, 95 through Dunlop Lake, uh, meanders through Silver Lakes, and is, uh, you know, is periodically an area that floods. So to have uh, Eversource say that there is no impact study, um, whether it be noise or flooding, is, is illogical and it's actually quite offensive, um, considering those are the two really significant issues that Jamie Stevenson made a very good point of in her statement that are impacting our town of Darien. Now, when a nature preserve floods, it's not that big a deal, and particularly if it's wetlands. It's supposed to, it's doing its job. And part of the job is done by the vegetation that exists in that area. Um, I will just, uh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna ask for just another minute or two because I'm speaking for two organizations, okay? Um, Eversource has been on the property. Jamie and Ed and Pam Geary have been on the property we are all in agreement, and I thank you for your visits, of its sensitivity, its value. But we look at the Little Brook Road extension, which goes to the entrance to Selix, as because it's um, contiguous land. This is really a valuable extension of a nature preserve that's been studied and acknowledged by independence for its diversity and value as open space in such a densely populated community. So. We are asking that Eversource really pay close attention to the sensitive areas um, and address those areas that need work where we've, things will be cut, that they do so with hand cutting rather than bringing heavy equipment in. Um, and, and that's very important to us. We're also concerned that the remediation plan that was put forward to the town uh, on, and has been offered to private citizens, we have not seen any specific plan that addresses remediation within our property. And also we're concerned that DOT has to sign off on any plans to plant. I've not heard anything from DOT with respect to acknowledging plant replanting on their property. Uh, there are other questions that have not been answered specifically. When do trees take out or what incidences have trees taken out high tension, high voltage lines in the Darien corridor? We know about distribution, but we've asked specifically, when was an outage due to a tree taking out a tension line in Darien? Well, that is a simple question, and it's been unanswered. And if there is any opportunity within Eversource's policy to address a local issue and deviate or modify its global policy of clear cutting, there must be incidences where they take consideration of environmental and domestic and commercial interests and we think those should be addressed. Finally, I would just say that given that heat and flooding are such important issues in this town and threatening the actual infrastructure and quality of life in this town, that Eversource not proceed until a professional study and assessment is completed to really address the impact that this is gonna have on our community and That's what alternative methods to accomplish their goal might be deployed. Thank you very much. Dennis, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, our next 
speaker is, oh goodness, I knew I was going to get one of these tonight. Um, Simeon Kerr Lahad. Um, Ed Nicole Rivard. Uh, sure, let's go to Nicole Rivard. We'll go to Simeon next. Hi, I'm Nicole Rivard. I live on Hoyt Street, and I'm also a staff member at Friends of Animals, which is also um, an international wildlife advocacy group based in Darien. So I heard Eversource talk about economic loss if the power goes out, but what about public safety? You know, what about the public safety issue of the climate crisis and the negative environmental impact of cutting down healthy, mature trees? I think it's very nice that Eversource is offering to plant trees, but they can't see the forest for the trees. The planting of the right trees correctly, such as choosing native trees, a diverse mix of species, making sure there's enough room for roots and providing adequate water is something, of course, I support. But the truth is experts are warning that we cannot plant our way out of the climate crisis. On Arbor Day this year, which is something Americans have been celebrating for 149 years by planting trees, Karen Howe, the professor of restoration ecology at the University of California actually urged the public to protect the trees we already have. She, I, I'm going to quote her as saying, we felt it was important to tell people that planting trees is not a substitute for protecting intact forests and trees or for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. She points out that while trees start capturing carbon as soon as they're planted, the amount is actually quite small for the first few years. And after about 20 to 30 years, they'll start capturing quite a lot of carbon, but it still takes at least 100 years for a broadleaf tree or about 60 years for a conifer to reach maturity, where they have captured and are storing as much carbon as mature trees in existing forests. The biggest and oldest trees are also more valuable in terms of biodiversity. They provide hollows, cracks, and crevices that insects, birds, bats, and small mammals can use for food, nesting, and hibernation sites, and dead wood that supports fungi. So loss of existing trees and forests is devastating for both wildlife and the climate. I think that Darianne um, should look towards our neighbors in Norwalk just recently, their five member volunteer tree advisory committee that was appointed by the mayor was working with city leaders on a more enlightened tree ordinance to reflect that allowing a developer or a utility company to replace a seconds. fully mature, to replace a fully mature tree with a sapling is no longer acceptable. So I really hope that Darian steps up and helps to educate Eversource on the value of our trees yeah, and that's... Eversource has to stop looking at them as just leaves to be picked up or the possibility of losing power in a storm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Lubomir Rodolov from 82 Holmes Avenue. I hope I said that correctly. Mr. Rodoloff, you need to unmute. I'd move to the next, Ed. Hello. So I'm Simran. Um, did you not skip my turn? Can I speak right now? Yes, or you can. Need to go? Okay. No, please do. Please do. Okay. Thank you so much. So um, my name is Simran Kaur Lathad. I am from New Britain, but I'm a member of Connecticut Botanical Society. I am also a member of Ecology and Conservation Sub Conservation Committee and a member of a Row Subcommittee. So first of all, I would like to make sure Eversource has copies of our row recommendation. 
in particular i'd like to emphasize like many small trees and large shrubs that are very valuable for ameliorating climate change and wildlife and i have already sent a draft to um to uh, mr gentile if you did take a look at it so in that draft i have included many small trees and large shrubs that are valuable for the wildlife and climate change and um, we think that they should be allowed to be preserved or planted in the border zone in row in lower elevation adjacent to the little brook road and um, since eversource has given options for us to make uh, to give suggestions of the trees that we can plant these are some of the trees we think would be very valuable to be added to the list so that would be on my end thank you so much Thank you very much. Appreciate you speaking. Our next speaker is, oh, so I want to make one comment first. If you came in late and you would like to speak, you need to actually put your name and address, please, in the chat room so that I can add you to the list. Thank you very much. So our next speaker is Marie Morgan from 17 Littlebrook Road. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Hi, I'm Marie Morgan. I live at 17 Little Brook Road North in Darien. Um, I am here to express my extreme concern related to Eversource's proposal to clear cut the wooded lands between Little Brook Road and the, um, and the CDOT Metro North train tracks. I live on Little Brook Road North and like many of my neighbors, our house has experienced devastating flooding, destroying our finished basement and garage twice in the last few months. We've witnessed firsthand rushing water charging through our home, reaching upwards of two to three feet. To date, we've been lucky that our only losses have been material. I'm alarmed that this proposed clear cutting will dramatically impact these water levels and potentially result in greater loss and possible bodily harm. One of the most significant single causal factors in the devastating impacts of flooding is clear cutting of wooded areas. Deforestation contributes to the severity of flooding in terms of the relation of the absence of trees to the overall impacts of climate change. Eversource is proposing a solution that benefits only them and their profit margin. They need to recognize the irreparable damage their plan will have on the community in terms of flooding, increased temperatures, loss of animal habitat, pollution from loss of carbon dioxide sequestration and increased noise. But first and foremost, the deforestation will result in increased flooding, which cannot possibly be absorbed by their proposed grassy meadows. Deforestation increases the impacts of flooding by increasing the speed and amount of sedimentary runoff, decreasing the amount of rainfall that is intercepted as there are simply less leaves on the trees and surrounding vegetation to absorb rainfall and reprocess it through photosynthesis. And the simple fact that there is literally nothing physically pre present to stem the tide of a fast flowing flood, which may or may not contain additional sedimentary elements. The healthy large trees on both the town right of way and CDOT property need to be saved and a plan needs to be developed that allows for native pollinators that include established trees and bushes in order to help maintain the current mixed wetland ecosystem. Um, I'm here to speak for the 100-year-old oak that lives there. I'm here to speak for the 100-year-old maple that lives there. I'm here to speak for the, the mother fox that has her babies in a den under these wooded areas. I'm here to speak for the Tennessee warbler that comes through. I'm here to speak for the deer. All of these natural elements um, and living bodies can't be here to speak for their homes, which are in drastic danger. And it's very concerning. And I strongly believe that there can be a vegetation management plan developed that can take their needs, our needs into consideration that will be healthy for us, healthy for the earth and healthy for um, all of the livelihood of Darien. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um... We're gonna try Mr. Rudolph one more time. Uh, he had problems with his mute button, so let's try him one more time.
Go ahead, Mr. Rudolph. Okay, I guess we're st we're still working on his mute. So uh, we'll go to the next speaker, Deb. Wait, he's, he's unmuted. Go ahead. Do you hear me now? We do. He, he's here. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for your patience as well. Uh, yes, uh, I'm uh, uh, Lubomir Radulov, and uh, I live at 82 Holmes Avenue, and would like to uh, support uh, um, um, first. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Jimmy Stevenson and all the speakers to this moment. Uh, the problem that we are facing uh, is not related to the mentioned streets only. I would like to support the speakers that uh, mentioned that this is for all the properties along the uh, railroad. And uh, um, basically uh, to express, uh, um, I would like to express uh, um, the uh, common opinion that uh, a measure like this uh, that uh, really will turn our community into something very different uh, without uh, uh, doing any um, impact analysis and not only on environmental impact analysis. Uh, we, we definitely need uh, uh, environmental, but uh, along with this uh, uh, economic analysis, uh, social analysis, how this is going to impact um, uh, our community uh, and therein. Uh, and um, I would like to call here for the integrity of um, Eversource. Uh, and uh, don't, they, don't they think that uh, this is basically stealing from our properties, from our community to enrich um, uh, basically their organization and their stakeholders? Uh, is it acceptable at all to make um, a decision uh, to do something to get in our uh, um, properties and to do uh, something that they would uh, uh, basically um, impact uh, uh, not only uh, the value of our properties but our livelihood uh, just for, for their uh, profits and uh, uh, their bonuses. Uh, this, I believe, is unacceptable and uh, I, I would uh, like really to call uh, not only the people that are on this call and this meeting, but uh, everyone around uh, Darien, because this is going to create um, uh, a very uh, dangerous precedent uh, and uh, uh, private companies uh, to be able to impact uh, the livelihood yes. of, uh, uh, of, of the people in the community. Uh, I'm uh, uh, basically living in the United States for 22 years, and one of the reasons to come to this country from former socialist Bulgarian is exactly the way uh, somebody can get into your property and take yours. And really seeing this happening here, uh, I, I cannot accept this uh, for normal and acceptable. Um, and um, hope really uh, ever source to, five, uh, to find decency to stop this project before really make the impact analysis that is required. Thank you very much. All right, thank, no, thank you very much. Appreciate your speaking. Our next speaker is Deb Latham, 429 Hoyt Street. Hi, I tried to start the video, but I guess no one wants to see me, which is okay. Um, so I want to, um, Thank Eversource for your, uh, your your presentation and you know for your um, very detailed photographs. But the one photograph that came to mind, like for me, was seeing the picture of the tree that was like thirty feet above the high tension wires. And I don't see a single tree that is towering above the high tension wires in Darien, let alone on Little Brook Road. My mother-in-law lives on Little Brook Road. And there, there, there's like a berm down from like the wires and the train tracks and all of these trees that you guys wanna cut down are like 50 feet from the top of the wires. So I, I don't know where that picture came from. Um, secondly, we, we have seen two severe storms in the past few months where folks have just their, their property and their homes have been completely destroyed. 
that the flooding damage has been, you know, something, you know, out of a, a, a hundred year storm. Um, trees are thirsty. Let's keep them there. They will, they will help the, the flooding problems in this town. Um, I'm also hearing about power outages. The power outages are due mostly to the local wires, not the high tension wires along I-95 and along the Metro North train track. So maybe um, Eversource can start burying those wires as roads are maybe being repaved, invest money in burying the wires, and then we won't have the power outages. Um, finally, a rhododendron or you know, an azalea is not going to replace a tree. I'm sorry, I, your intentions may be you know, well enough, but it's not going to replace a tree. And finally, I'm going to end my speech with a poem from one of my favorite poets, Joyce Kilmer. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the sweet earth's flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray, a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Please don't be fools. Please keep our trees intact. Thank you. Right. No, thank you very much for uh, speaking. We have uh, next Paola Sordani uh, will be next. Hi, H hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, okay great. Um, so uh, I'm glad like uh, many people have already um, educate all of us here on the importance of the trees and how those trees are um, going to environmentally be, uh, impact our area um, also with our floods. Uh, but I also would like to add that Eversource um, last year alone has created, generated 1.2 billion in profit. And, um, uh, uh, and the, there are other options for the wires, you know, like a, we can bear the wires just like as the previous speaker have just mentioned, um, or we can, uh, we can do other things with the wires, but the trees, once we take them down, they cannot be replaced. We cannot take them and move them for a more convenient uh, location. So I really hope that Eversource consider put a little more investment on this location. And instead of cutting down the trees, put the uh, wires underground, um, which will benefit uh, Eversource with the less maintenance for the future and will also benefit the town. So we won't have the visual pollution that those wires um, create every time we look at them. So um, that is my suggestion. I think there is a lot of room for improvement and the Eversource has been doing uh, wires like this for so many years. I think it's time to uh, reach the uh, new, um, like a be more high technology, just like a Verizon. Verizon is putting everything underground. You know, so like a why Eversource is just so behind. So I think it's time for us to do underground wires. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Sidran Gadwa. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi here. I'm actually um, a consulting ecologist. Um, I've been for 30 years now, I've been um, doing ecological assessments, environmental assessments in forests and other habitats in the Northeast. Um, and I well, was actually hired by this neighborhood um, to make a um, was sort of at the last minute, but I did get to drive out there on Friday, take a look and and read through <laughs> the, the testimony, and I wrote a wrote a brief letter which was submitted early. And what I want to say is that there I heartily agree. I think it was Deb the. Um, the ecosystem services of a tree are a direct function of its leaf area. You know, the, the um, 
acreage <laughs> of leaves in a forest it, are all that photosynthesis in the leaf and all that um, transpiration, the oxygen it produces, the water it gives out, which then is like an air conditioner cooling the cooling the um, neighborhood. And not um, the and the thing that is not so emphasized is that all the twigs and leaves and branches on a tree. Um, they get wet, they, they, they take up a surprising amount of rainfall just as they get wet. And then they slowly let the water dribble down into the ground uh, when you have a, you know, a major thunder, thunderstorm cloudburst, um, reducing flooding and then allowing infiltration into the ground to replenish the people's, the water table for people's wells instead of causing flooding. And um, that, so that, the and also, so who uh, some one of you um, said um, trees are thirsty and indeed trees are thirsty. The volume of water that they suck out of the ground and put back up into the atmosphere is amazing. And um, you know they make taking all that water out of the ground makes the the ground porous and it lets there be air in there because roots need air to live. What you end up having is um, forests getting sick and die and <laughs> dying when um, when there's too much. The water is water The ground is waterlogged too much of the time. There are not enough tall trees transpiring. So, uh, what what how, as to how it relates here? Um, I think there needs to be an effort. Um, assume I think it's going to be very, very difficult to put the wire such high power wires underground. I, I do not necessarily think that's going to be feasible. However, one yes. can plant a lot more large, small trees and large shrubs. And in the border zone, not directly under the wires, you can put moderate sized trees under 25 feet with quite a significant volume of foliage and ability to do the ecosystem services. And you can also consider what kind, whether the trees are light, are the, have a wood that snaps easily, yes. like let's say tulip tree, um, or, or is, is I, you know, I, we've cut down the tulip trees within 60 feet of our house because they're so brittle and they're not safe and they, they should not be in a right of way. But a hickory is flexible and it's not gonna break and a very, very low probability. So what we provided um, is what we've started providing. We've, the, uh, an incomplete draft has been submitted. Four minutes. Okay, four minutes now? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, the, the, if you're doing replanting for the trees that you unavoidably need to remove, like white pines that just grow too fast and are too brittle. Um, you, there's a lot of characteristics of those trees that should be taken into account as you plan what to put where. And um, so we're, um, we're working on a table um, just to help the town and, and um, at resource anybody who wants to download it from from, the, from our website, We're, I work with a, the Connecticut Botanical Society. I'm I'm on that um, the I'm actually the chair of their um, Ecology and Conservation Committee, and we put together uh, vegetation management recommendations, um, uh, quite detailed, and spent a lot of time on that, and we sent, we sent copies of that for you guys too. So a much and better. If you, can, if you can wrap up, please. We have a couple other people who'd like to speak also. Sure, I'll wrap up right now. I Thank can. You. I can just say, um, the you can. You don't have to immediately take out the mounds of porcelain, berry, and grape overinvasives. That they're, they're stable. That you still have, you have time to uh, work more on your placement plan. And Thank you. Ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, next on our list is uh, Alba Dextheimer, 5 Little Brook Road. Hello. Am I unmuted? Okay, perfect. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. 
Uh, my name is Alpha Dexheimer, and I live with my husband and two daughters and dog at Five Little Brook Road in Darien. Um, I wanted to use my time to read a part of Pura's decision, um, which evaluated Eversource's response during Tropical Storm Isaias. Um, and I will explain why I'm doing that. So the decision begins with shareholders or ratepayers, a private corporation or a public utility. The questions the citizens of Connecticut were left asking after the storm of 2020 was which was which of these two groups matter more to the state's monopoly electric utilities and which of these two types of companies would show up in their time of need after a catastrophic storm plunging many into darkness for a week or more. Without a doubt, a private corporation showed up for Tropical Storm Isaias in the form of Eversource, not a company who understood its public service obligation to the state or its citizens. Captive customers who have no choice in their distribution service provider experience extended outages, faulty or inoperable communication systems, inaccurate and inconsistent information, public safety hazards left unattended, the sites of crews lingering with no work to be done, all with the tone-deaf reassurances that the company's storm response had, in fact, been exemplary. Meanwhile, in stark contrast, shareholders were met with assurances from the company's CEO that ratepayers would foot the bill for hundreds of millions of dollars in storm costs, cost recovery for which neither the utility has even applied, but instead have fought tooth and nail against providing transparent and timely documentation of throughout this proceeding. What I would like to highlight is the fact that in 2020, Eversource had 478 qualified line workers at its disposal. That is 10% or 6% less than in 2010. In 2010, they had 509. Eversource stated that when securing mutual aid crews for storms generally and for Tropical Storm Isaias in particular, the company avoids bringing in crews early when weather forecasts are uncertain because it seeks to avoid incurring pre-staging costs. My argument is that given the increased severity in storms, which the CEO of Eversource has acknowledged um, in, the art, in an article that he recently published in the Darien Times, that it is not that he acknowledged the increase in storms and yet Eversource has much fewer line workers available. It's consistently shown that it's, that it's putting its shareholders above the citizens, which makes sense because it's a corporation and its primary fiduciary duty is to its shareholders. Yes. Sorry, three minutes? Yes. Okay. Okay, I thought I was out of time. Um, <clears throat> so I think that, I mean, I can send all of these documents to you later. But this is specifically to Joe Nolan, who is the Eversource CEO. I think that the argument that he's making in his article, the hard work of keeping the power on is misleading. This isn't about attacking Eversource. In fact, all of the citizens of Darien and across Connecticut value having a resilient power grid. Nobody is arguing that. What I, my question to them has always been, number one, how many instances of power outages have actually been caused by transmission wires? Like what we haven't conducted an impact analysis. So you can't make a decision as to what is the, the proper outcome without having done that. And Eversource has not wanted to conduct an environmental impact study, which I think is the least that they oh, could nice. do. Secondly, given all of the catastrophic flooding that we've seen, and given the fact that the Eversource CEO literally begun his article saying climate change is real. It's producing larger, more intense storms and weather, and we're seeing it right here in Connecticut. And at the very same time is advocating for deforestation of miles and miles and miles of, of forests. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny in this, you know, dystopian way. So my proposal is as follows. <clears throat> I think that we all need to sit down, we need to hire, um, just like someone mentioned previously, a professional to conduct an environmental impact study and to be able to analyze the data from Eversource, which it should have, um, given the fact that the top wire of all of the transmission wires is a signal wire of how many outages have actually happened. 
and be able to calculate the probability and the cost, not only to, you know, to Eversource and its shareholders, but to the communities all around it and be able to make an educated decision on what is best for the communities. Like we're not optimizing for Eversource's shareholders here. Um, and secondly, I actually think that, you know, you should probably hire more qualified line workers. I, you know, all the people that I've met who work with Eversource, like I love them as people, I'm they're great. Nobody, nobody is anti Eversource, the people, the line workers, we appreciate them. And in fact, I think you should hire more of them. And it's a quite, quite convenient, um, you know, new policy to clear cut all of the trees, which essentially eliminates the maintenance program. And how much money are you saving by not having to pay line workers, not having to pay their health insurance, not having Six to months. pay their salary to be able to a perform vegetation maintenance. And then secondly, to be able to respond to these storms. I think the fact that there are 6% fewer line workers than in 10, 2010, when the storms have increased in severity says everything. And I think that this is absolutely something that needs to be looked at at the state level um but it starts here and i'm really grateful that we have the chance to Six express minutes, our our thoughts thank you thank you very much um our next speaker is kip morgan 17 littlebrook road hi my name is kip morgan i live at 17 littlebrook road north in darien and um, this is now my third uh, uh, meeting, uh, one once in person, a circle down at the end of the road, uh, and then two others, Zoom meetings. Um, here we are again. We have asked several times for you guys to be flexible and work with us, and we have received a vegetation uh, replacement plan, but it is woefully inadequate. Many, many people have asked you many, many questions, and all we've heard is either no, or when asked many times how much money you were saving as a result of this or what the financial results were, we said we will not release that information. Clearly, this is a financial uh, decision. Calling this a, an initiative to, uh, in support of sustainability is a complete oxymoron. Trimming the trees is a sustainable prop program. You did it for 30 years. I would consider 30 years to be somewhat sustainable. Now you're saying you wanna get rid of it and make a change and you cite the fact that there was recent arcing on the tracks as a result of the need to do this. Well, the recent arcing on the tracks was because of negligence on Eversource's part of not trimming the trees. You can't just stop doing something with it is dangerous. Those trees should have been trimmed. The fact that there was arcing shows gross negligence on, on the behalf of Eversource. You should be out there, you should be trimming them. You should be putting in trees at a staggered level that will be manageable and maintain both water absorption and sound absorption and, and a visual barrier for those taxpayers that live on the road. Um, so I, I'd like to bring that to everybody's attention. And quite frankly, after the three times that we've been here now, and we haven't really heard any flexibility on behalf of Eversource, we've just heard, it's our right. We have the law on our hat, on our side. We can really do whatever we want. I look at, I look at it, uh, you know, I'm glad you're here but the, the, the face betrays the, the opinion of being bored and just putting up with us residents. There's a hundred people who care about this on the Zoom tonight. And I feel that you're really not gonna just do anything unless we're willing to take legal action and show you that the cost of doing this is going to be more than the cost of not doing it. So uh, that's my uh, plea to the group here, a hundred in, uh, excited individuals to try and make um, make a change uh, is that my, my thought is that you're, you're not going to really do anything until, until the economics become upside down for you, Makes because sense. it's clear to, clear to me that you only care about the finances. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Morgan had the pleasure of being our, our final listed uh, speaker. Uh, I'm going to make one final call for any folks that would like to provide testimony with regards to these, uh, at the, these proceedings, um, please uh, log in. I'll give you a second or so. Okay, not seeing anyone. Um, that, is, that is the end of our public hearing. The uh, tree warden will, within the next three days, post his decision per statute. 
And uh, what you heard from Mike was that uh, there are avenues if you uh, feel that you've been aggrieved by his decision at all, both on Eversource's side and on the side of the residents. Um, and I wanna thank you all for coming out. It was, this was uh, well attended, over a hundred people on this call. I wanna thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night, folks.